Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to now deal with two-dimensional kinematics. But what I want to show you with this first problem is it's really the same thing. What's going to happen is in kinematics, now that you're going in two dimensions, you're just going to treat the X and the Y components separately. Now, in future problems, they're going to help each other, like, they're going to help each other solve the problem. You'll see what I mean there. But the X component is independent of the Y. Okay, you treat each independently. But both components can be utilized to help solve for the other. You'll see that in uh, my next two problems that I have after this. But let's just really drive that point home here with the number one. With the number one, I'm giving you a velocity vector. And that was my number one for 1D kinematics, and they wanted to find uh, acceleration and position. Nothing changes. If I want to find acceleration, if I want to find acceleration, that's going to be the derivative of velocity. That's going to be a vector function, right? If I want to find acceleration, that's the derivative of velocity. And then once I want to find my position, my r of t, what you're going to do is you're going to integrate your velocity. And you're going to use your initial conditions in order to actually solve for those extra constants. But we'll get there in just a sec. So, if you're given a velocity vector, and the object started at t equals 1, at the point x equals 4, y equals 2, find acceleration and position. So let's do it. Acceleration is simply the derivative of velocity. And so I'm going to take the derivative of the x term and derivative of the y term. So the derivative of my x term, this is going to be 3c1t squared plus c2, and then i, plus, and then the y component, taking the derivative of that, is 2c3t plus c4. That's it. That is your acceleration. All right, so now that I have my acceleration, a little bit tougher, let's find my position. Now, I put my position, my r of t, is equal to the integral or antiderivative of my velocity. So, let's go ahead and do that. Integrating this, c1 t to the fourth over 4, plus c2 t squared over 2, plus some constant, but I'll call it cx. Knowing that this is some constant, I don't know what it is, but it's for my x component. We're going to have to solve for that. And then now let's go ahead and integrate the y component. So it'll be c3, t cubed over 3, plus c4, t squared over 2, plus some c, y, well, y component, j. Okay. And what we need to do is solve for these extra constants using our initial condition. And so, for the x component, okay, at t equals 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 1 into my x component, and I'm going to set it equal to 4, okay, because it said at t equals 1, x is 4. And so setting that, or plugging 1 into there, I'm going to have c1 over 4, plus c2 over 2, plus cx, all needs to output a 4 whenever I plug the 1 into there. And so solving for cx, this is simply 4 minus c1 over 4 minus c2 over 2. So I've got that. Perfect. Now let's deal with the y's. Once again, at t equals 1, I'm going to plug 1 into my y component, and i got to set it equal to 2. This needs to output a 2 whenever t is equal to 1. So plugging 1 into there, we're going to have c1 over 3. Uh, just kidding, c3 over 3, right, c3 over 3, plus c4 over 2, plus that cy, and that needs to equal 2. And so cy is simply c3 over 3, oh, just a second. It's 2 minus c3 over 3, minus c4 over 2. Now that I have cx, now that I have cy, your final answer, your R of T, your position function. In the I parentheses, we're going to have C1 T to the fourth over 4 plus C2 T squared over 2. And then my CX is plus 4 
minus c1 over 4 minus c2 over 2. And then for my y component in my j parentheses, we're going to have c3, t cubed over 3, plus c4, t squared over 2, plus my cy, but there's your cy, plus 2 minus c3 over 3, minus c4 over 2, j. It's a little bit longer than the one-dimensional one because you just got to do double the work. You know, you got to take the derivative and integral of two components rather than one. But hopefully this drove home the point that it's still the exact same thing as 1D kinematics. Join me in the next two videos, though, and I'll show you with um, actual, like, examples and uh, real-world, quote-unquote, real-world application. You'll see what I mean by that in the next two videos.